Matthias Day from Talking Points. I'm with Jeff Pulver. Um, I, 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 I consider Jeff a VoIP pioneer. I know you were the founder of Vonage. Yes. And uh, I remember I, I attending the Vaughn conferences a long time ago. That was that was 90s. Is that does that from, sound from 97 to 2008? Okay, so I ran into you here at the uh, UC Expo in London, and I also ran into you uh, two weeks ago yeah. uh, in Amsterdam at the Costa 23 CPAS event. Um, I've been in Europe the whole time. You've been traveling all over the place. I have been, yes. <laughs> yes. So I was, I was actually surprised to see you here. Uh, so this is a... Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of Vaughn. I mean, uh, what... what uh, I, I have to be... Right. It makes reminds me a lot about Vaughn, at least from the side, from the exhibitors that are here, and the feel that I have walking around the show floor. So how is it different than Vaughn? Let's try it that way. Well, for, for me, running Vaughn and watching it grow organically, that was a life-changing experience. When I come to this show, the biggest change for me is that my friends are mostly not here. The companies that are here never heard of Jeff Pulver. They don't know that, oh, I helped you get funding. Oh, I, you guys, your strategic relationship with that carrier, I brought them to you. You guys were at Vaughn, you were rock stars. Who are you? Because in the last 15 years, so many people have come into these companies, they kind of forget who remembers history, who studies history, right? But for, for me, the thing that's changed the most are these silly acronyms. Back in the day, uh, a, 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 cloud a cloud communication service provider, I'm sorry, 15 years ago, I called you guys an ITSP, that's Internet Telephony Service Provider. Yep, I remember now, that. Now, now, no disrespect, but uh, at least I understand what that was. I, I never differentiated whether you were hosting your service yourself or depending upon someone else's cloud. I mean, what is the cloud anyway? We're we looking to the sky, is it stars, or is it someone's co-location facility that you're not paying for all the equipment when you're outsourcing a piece of it anyway? So, for Vaughn, simple stuff. We looked at architecture, we looked at opportunity. There, there was innovation. Uh, we finally, though, had the promise of WebRTC coming into fruition. We kind of killed off H323, and VoIP was there. And the last couple of years I ran Vaughn, I warned the industry to look, look over your shoulder at the, at the uh, out-of-band signal, as I called it, the over-the-top messages. Yep, yep. One day phone calls would, would be happening less and less on the telephone and more in applications. That was when uh, Facebook was coming in with Messenger. Yep. And, and I think I got most of that right. The one thing which I, I wish I knew about then is that we needed to trust, we needed to put in more elements of trust. Because I, while the telecom industry today might be worth two trillion, I absolutely believe it could have been worth four or five trillion if we didn't lose trust along the way. I mean, all these businesses that are now built on the fact that you don't answer the call. I mean, that that's maddening, you know. It's, it's crazy. It's and, 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 <laughs> I, I don't, and I don't know how we grow as an industry. I mean, I. I will forever t say I believe that voice is a killer app, when, particularly like in hardship and hard times and someone, you know, someone is not well or you don't know how someone is, hearing their voice yep. is very important. But the fact that by default we don't answer the call, yeah, it's we, gotta, we gotta fix that. Now, now you talked about the way it's kind of shifted to these over the top players. Do you think the service provider is going to have their their return, or is it going to just keep on going? I mean, Blue Jeans is a great example, right? Verizon bought Blue Jeans; they were going to compete with Zoom, and then they shut down. Uh, they shut down Blue Jeans. Well, 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 one of the fundamental pro trouble we have with acquisitions, not just in the Vaughn space, but overall, is culture. That it's sort of like when the founder leaves the building, and you have the shell of the company. Does the core company's uh, culture connect or disconnect? With, your, with the acquiring company's culture. And if it's disconnected, it, it, it sometimes it takes a while for them to either continue it or drop it or figure out a, a medium. And he, the thing you mentioned Verizon, you know, so, so people watching this may not know who I am, a boy pioneer, sure. My, my opening line at most, conf, most conferences when I'm speaking, I say, how many people uh, here in the audience uh, use WhatsApp? And then I ask you, how many people pay to use WhatsApp? And what I'm getting at is that, as far as I know, for consumers, it's free. And then I will follow up by, well, you're welcome. Because in 2003, without any prompting from industry, I went to the Federal Communications Commission and I petitioned them for a proactive ruling. And they didn't have to put my petition out for public comment, but thank God they did. And on February 12, 2004, the FCC issued something called the Pulver Order, which is why around the world, particularly in the US, but it's honored in most countries, 
that voice communication that originates on broadband is not regulated like telecom. Uh, uh, video has gotten the benefit of it also, and if you can imagine the pandemic would work from home, stay from home, study from home, if you had to pay for that. And in 2015, I'm at Verizon's offices in Washington, D.C. The number two person from Verizon greets me in their boardroom. We were there for a different meeting. He starts the meeting off by saying, congratulations, Jeff, you won. I said, what? He says, look around our boardroom. Look at those tombstones. Ever since 2004, every company that we acquired was a data company. He showed me Yahoo, he pointed out AOL. He says, thanks to the Culver order, we transitioned from telecom to data. Congratulations. And Interesting. I, and I never thought about that. And, and you look at these acquisitions now, Blue Jeans and others, there seems to be a push to want to be on the data side of the business. And I'm thinking it's not telecom or data, but how do you serve the customer? And how do we build applications? How do we build services that are sticky, that make our customers happy? Because if all we care about is wholesale minutes, that, that's a, a, a rush to zero these days. But again, if we actually could trust people, then we have a whole other wealth of services we could offer where it's, where it's value added. It's just that people have made it that commodity. And I'm waiting for the person, frankly, to look at all the over-the-top services and create a next generation routing protocol. So if, if Dave wants to call Jeff, I might, be a, I might be a Skype person, I might be a Vonage person, I might be, I don't know, a WhatsApp. You initiate a call to me, imagine there's a lookup service, and by default, oh, actually Jeff wants to be on, uh, he wants to be on Telegram, but you don't have to know my Telegram. All knows a call comes there's to a, me. Like a switch. A switch. You want a switch? A next, a next generation the switch. The future is in voice switching. You, you heard it right here on this video. It, it, so, it's AI based voice switching. Okay. Because it's AI, because I will opt, because AI knows everything about me anyway, so under, I will verify, validate my preferences for communication to an AI Lord Master. And I say, oh, you want to reach me? And these are people I want to speak with? Yeah. How's, here's how to reach me. Here's how to send me an, an by the way, I realize generations don't know what an at sign is, but it's mm. an email in our case. Yeah, yes. But if you want to communicate with email in, in asynchronous, or if you want to synchronously communicate with me, um, this is my communication uh, methods. And all right, all AI, right. AI voice switching. Okay, I, I want to. I know we can double click on this one, but I want to. I want to get to another topic here because now you've opened the can of worms. You said AI, uh, <laughs> and so so uh, when you were doing the Vaughn, I mean, this, it's it's so interesting because you have a historical perspective as you look at the industry, uh, and most people don't have that. Um, when you look at AI today, there's just a ton of hype, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, we're on the we're on the uh, for the people who are watching this video in the future. Uh, Copilot is about to launch. Uh, Duet from Google is about to launch. Uh, 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 Zoom just announced AI Companion. So we're on the we're on the we're on the precipice of an AI revolution. There's a ton of hype out there. This has to be a little bit of deja vu for you. Uh, tell me about the hype uh, cycles in in in, uh, in VoIP at the uh, uh, 20 years ago, I guess it was 30 years ago. And and what are your expectations of AI based on that? Based on that, AI is going to go out of the public uh, 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 mind space as quickly as it came in and will come back even fiercer. So voice over IP was, uh, we, had, we had a hype cycle early in 95, in 1995, when Vocal Tech launched the first iPhone, which didn't come from Silicon Valley in 2007, no, no, the first iPhone was called Internet Phone, which called, we, the, us who used it called the iPhone, that was 1995. The original hype cycle for voice over IP was in 1995, when people had the ability as a consumer to have an application that ran on your computer, yes, computer, not mobile phone, and I could talk to strangers. Now, why do you want to talk to strangers? Different conversation, but we did. This led to the original, the original Skype. That Skype came out, but it, before between free between uh, internet phone and Skype in 1995, I launched Free World Dial-Up. I took the APIs uh, from iPhone, the uh, internet phone, took APIs from a, a Cirrus chip uh, chipset logic modem, and I created the first 1.4 gateway in 1995 ahead of Dialogic, and we distributed for free to any home who wanted to play with us. We can make free phone calls in and out. Okay, no, no data buffer, no echo cancellation, no quality service, but it worked. That was the hype, the highest the hype cycle ever was. Like uh, for me, in uh, here being here in London, November '95, there was a Sunday Times story on the front page of this, this issue of the Times, Bill Gates and the Road Ahead. On the back page, I kid you not, free world dial-up and the threat to the future of British Telecom. It is funny as heck journalism. All these years later, it was there. That was hype. Then we had a down. Then we had a downturn. Then around 1999, 
uh, before the dot com crash, it gets hypish again. Yep. And then then it falls again. And like 2002, 2003, not so cool to do VoIP. Going into 2004, people were saying it's over, it, it's a trend, it's going away. It's going away. And then like 19. I remember a lot of VoIP companies went bust. I yeah, remember that. that. It might have been for, for bad management or for bad ideas, uh, but not so much the, the need for, though. And then we started seeing by 2006, things kicking up again. And there are financial cycles. Now you look at AI, um, the, the only thing that's different this time around is that AI, look, any one of you listening to this who's ever written a line of code, congratulations. In my opinion, you've done artificial intelligence. When you get a computer to operate across a, an instruction set that you program, that's AI. And that's, and, and most people learning to write code don't think of themselves as artificial intelligence, but we are. But it's when that intelligence comes alive with this generative stuff. That's the stuff that's super hype and has the potential of changing the way we do things. Um, I am fearful, though, of, uh, of generative AI voice for bad things, called deep fake videos. Yes. We, we, we are seeing bad actors. And, and deep, voice, deep, deep fake voice. You do the phone call, like yeah. the Terminator robot was, was actually pretty uh, yes. uh, predictive. Yeah. It failed, right, we took it right out of sci-fi. And so those are the things we have to be careful of. We do want to protect the elderly, and families which are going to be, because uh, that's, that's why I say voice is a killer app, absolutely, but there's a lot of emotional attachment and when it's, when, when, when you disintermediate that, people can do really bad things. In, in terms of technology opportunity though, I do think we can, we can see, we haven't seen where AI voice goes for good yet. We will. It's probably going to be another 18 months, 36 months, and then we have to start thinking about ourselves because business forever is changed, but you know what? When the internet went commercial, business forever was changed. Lots of different industries were affected, some more than others. And I do think that when you look at everything coming together, you take voice, digital voice, you take artificial intelligence, you, you, you take some other uh, communication platforms, and we're gonna, be, we're gonna be communicating differently. But as human beings, we have a soul, we have a need to communicate at certain times to share some information. It's not that I'm worried about uh, AI having consciousness, but AI has consciousness, soul, and has irrational exuberance. Then I'm a little worried. All right, exuberance. Um, all right, I want to wrap up this video. Let me ask you, we talked about the past and the future. Yeah. Let's talk about the nearer term future. What is Vaughn Evolution? Vaughn Evolution is my new uh, entry point back. Uh, it's sort of like the, what's old is new again. Uh, I decided uh, I decided in January of 2023 to re-enter the market looking at the intersection of things that are defined and not so defined. So for me, is take the $2 trillion telecom industry, mostly VoIP, let's look at it from an inter interdisciplinary perspective. So let's throw in AI, throw in blockchain, 6G, since I still don't know what that is, yep. and see where we're going. Bring people together who are highly opinionated, and yet at the same time, I'll be open to understand where we're going and, and create an environment where there are no PowerPoints, just conversations. And that's sort of like for me, the kind of converse, conferences I've been enjoying going to the last few years are ones where we meet people, you have hallway conversations, and then if I go to a session, it's a conversation. So I took that model. So Vine Evolution, the next one is November 1st and 2nd in New York City. It's, uh, it's, it's designed to be 100 to 120 people, executive level, filled with people who are passionate, who want to understand where we are today to better understand tomorrow. Wow, so that's coming up pretty soon. Yes, it is. All right, well with that, we will wrap this video up. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe the next time I see you will be in New York. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you.